Today I show how you can build a really cool range slider in Webflow, just like this one right here. The great thing about this range slider is that you have full control over the functionality and also the styles in Webflow. This range slider I think makes your forms much more interesting and more engaging to fill out and it's also super easy to implement. And the tool we're going to use today to build this range slider is the input flow library. This is a completely free components library that I built for Webflow form elements. And you don't need to sign up, you don't need to pay for this, you can just use it straight on the website. So that's what we're going to use today to build this range slider. This is the Webflow project we're starting from. So as you can see, there's quite a simple section. And on the right side, we have this image. And on the left side, we have the form. And this is a super basic Webflow form, so nothing special about it, with three input elements, the name, email, address, and company. And here where it says your budget, we're now going to add the fourth input element, which is the range slider component. Okay, so to add the range slider component, I go back to the input flow library. And to get to this library, you just open the link inputflow.io slash library, and then you will see this page. Right now, this component library only has one component, which is the range slider. But in the coming weeks, I will add additional elements right here that you can use to build your Webflow forms. So maybe if you watch this video and open the library, you will already see additional elements. But today we're going to focus on the range slider. So I select it and then the range slider documentation page opens up. As you can see here, already quite at the beginning, I have the option to copy and paste elements. And this is exactly what we're going to do. We're not going to build everything from scratch, but instead we're going to copy one of these elements of the input flow library and then customize it to our needs. In my case, I want to build a range slider with two handles. So I copy this right uh, range slider here. If you need a range slider with only one handle, you can copy this left component here. So I click on copy and then I go back to the Webflow project, select the form label, and paste it below. What's really important is that you don't paste it outside of a form. So for example, if I paste this here uh, next to the hero image, you can see I get this error message, text field can only be pasted in a form. So that's important. So inside of this form, I paste it below the your budget label. And there we go. Now we have our range slider inside of the form. Let's take a quick look at the structure of this range slider. I select it. And then I open the navigator and then we can have a look here. I open the range slider element. Okay. So this is the range slider wrapper element that you can see right here. This is the main element which contains all other elements of the range slider. Inside of the range slider wrapper, we have the range slider track. And inside of the range slider track, we have the track fill, which is this green a green element right here. And then we have the two handles as well. Obviously, if your range slider only has one handle, you would see only one handle element inside of here. Next, we have the range slider display values. So these are just two text elements that display the value, the formatted value of the range slider. And then down here, we have an element that is not visible and it contains two input elements to form inputs. And these two form inputs also store the value of the range slider so that when the form is submitted, the selection that the user made is also submitted with the form data. That is the basic structure. Okay, before we run a quick uh, test with this range slider to see if the basic setup is functional, what we have to do is we have to go back to the documentation page and then go to the instruction section because we have to copy the input flow library script, which you can see right here. So I copy the script, click the button, copy it, go back to the Webflow project and then open the page. And then I open the settings of the page where the form is located. And then I paste this inside of the head tag custom code section. Then click on save. Let's publish this to see if the basic setup is functional. I reload the page. And you can see now we have a form with a functional range slider. Perfect. Except it's not really perfect because now what we want to do next is we want to customize the style and the functionality. 
So let's start with the style. I select the range slider wrapper. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a little bit of top margin. I go to the spacing section and then give it a top margin of 1.25 rem so that there's a little bit of space between the label and the range slider itself. Next, I select the track fill of the range slider and then go to backgrounds and I change the background color. I already have a predefined color variable for purple, so I choose this one, but you can also type in a custom color value here. You can even set a gradient as the background for this track fill if that is what you want to do. Next, I select the first handle and then I go to the size of the handle. I think right now the handle is a little bit too large for this type of form. And I change the width from 1.8 to 1.6 rem. And I do the same thing for the height. I also change it from 1.8 to 1.6 rem. Next, I go to this border section down here and increase the border radius to make it a little more round. I increase it from 0.2 to 0.4 rem. Perfect. I like that. Next, I select the rain slider track itself. And you can see the background color of this track is some light gray. But this, it is not the same light gray as the background color of the form inputs. So I want the rain slider track to have the same background color as my form inputs. That is why I select my form input, go to backgrounds and copy this value here. Go back to the rain slider track and then paste it as the value. And now you can see the rain slider track and the form inputs have the exact same background color. The last thing that I want to customize with regards to the style is these display values. This text is a little large. So I click on it and then go to typography and remove the size styling so that these two texts here, which have the same class, uh, that, so that they inherit the font size of the body, which in this case is one rem. And I think that already looks much better. Let's publish this to the Webflow project and reload it and have a quick look. And you can see now our customized styles are visible on the Webflow page. Perfect. Next, what we can do now is we can customize the functionality of this range slider, because obviously for every project, you require a diff different type of functionality. You need different starting values, different step sizes and things like that. To customize the functionality of the range slider, what you can do is you can just select the range slider wrapper and then go to the settings panel and then scroll down to the custom attribute section because almost all of the settings that you can make for the range slider wrapper are stored as custom attributes on the range slider wrapper. You can see the first custom attribute is called iflib, which stands for input flow library. iflib equals range slider wrapper. So this just marks this element as the range slider wrapper element. Then we have iflib-min. So this attribute decides what is the minimum possible value of the range slider. And very similar, the iflib max attribute, which decides what is the maximum value of the range slider. Then the iflib step size, I think this is quite self-explanatory. The iflib format number equals true. So if this attribute is set, then what will happen is these values here, which display the values of the range slider, they will be formatted. So the numbers will be formatted. So instead of just displaying the raw number, they will have a thousand separator, which makes it easier to read for the website visitor. And last but not least is the iflib initial value attribute, which in this case has 2000 and 3000 separated by a comma. And this attribute basically just sets the starting value of the range slider. So what values should be applied once the page has loaded. If your range slider only has one handle for this attribute initial value, you obviously would only set one value. So these are the basic settings that we can make. And by the way, all of these settings are also documented on this range slider page. So where it says add and modify the required attributes, you can see a list of all of the elements the attributes that are required to activate the element and also the settings attribute that you can apply. So you can see 
uh, all of the attributes that I just showed to you, but also some additional one in case you want to have more custom and more advanced functionality. Okay, let's go ahead and modify the existing ones a little bit. For the iFlip min attribute, I want to choose a value of 2000 because for a budget range slider, it doesn't really make sense to have a starting value of zero. There should, there should always be some budget. For the iFlip max, let's set it to 10,000. For the step size, I think 100 would be a better step size here instead of 50. The iFlip format number, I leave this as it is. And the iFlip initial value, let's set it to, let's set it to 5,000 and 7,500. And then I publish this to the Webflow project and go to the live site, reload the page, and you can see now our settings are applied. So the starting values, the initial values are 5,000 and 7,500. If I drag the rain slider handle all the way to the left, you can see the minimum value is 2,000. If I drag it all the way to the right, you can see the maximum value is 10,000. Perfect. And also if I drag it just a little bit, you can see the step size is 100. So that was also applied successfully. Now there's one last and important thing that I want to do here. And that is, I want to add a dollar sign in front of this rain slider because right now it only displays a number, but for a budget range slider, there has to be a dollar sign or a, a currency sign in front of it so that the visitor knows what this 2000 exactly is. And to do that, I just select uh, this range slider display value element. And if we have a look at, at the custom attributes, you can see it has the attribute iflib equals range slider value display applied to it. And this way input flow knows that this is where it should display the value. By default, the element, the first element with this attribute range slider value display will display the lower value of the range slider. And the second element with this attribute range slider value display applied to it will display the upper or the higher value of the range slider in case it has two handles. Okay. Now to add the dollar sign, I just remove this attribute from both of these elements, remove it. And then in front of this placeholder number, remember this 5,000 is just a static placeholder. I add a dollar sign. Then I select the 5,000 without the dollar sign and click on this wrap with span icon. And now this creates a separate element. So the 5000 is now an element that can be selected individually within that text block. And that means we can also apply custom attributes. So I go to the settings and now basically I just reapply the attribute that I just deleted. So I have lip equals range slider value display. Perfect. And then let's do the same thing for the second one. I add a dollar sign in front of it. Then I select the zero, the placeholder, wrap it with a span. So now it's an individual element inside of the text block. Go to settings and also reapply this iflip equals range slider, slider value display right here. Range slider, I think I have a typo here. Yes, that is correct now. Let's publish this to the Webflow project and have a quick look. I reload the page and now you can see our range slider is still fully functional with all of the uh, settings that we made using the custom attributes, but also now we have the dollar sign in front of it. Now, one more really important and interesting thing about this range slider that you should be aware of on this documentation page, after the instructions, there is another section called accessibility. And accessibility is really important for the web these days. And that is why this range slider uh, component automatically comes with these different accessibility attributes applied to it, 
which you don't have to manage yourself. So you don't have to worry about this. This is just as, uh, as a little information for you so that you know this is also accessible to screen readers. Also, we have a great keyboard support for this component. You can see all of these different uh, keyboard keys, they have some functionality, some control functionality attached to it. For example, if I select a range slider handle and then click on tab, I go to the next handle. If I click shift tab, I go to the previous range slider handle. If I use my left and right keyboard keys or the up and down keys, you can see I can move the range slider. And there are also keys that you can use to set the range slider value to the maximum or to the minimum possible value. Or there are even keys that you can use to jump 10 steps at once. Again, all of the different keyboard functionalities are documented here on the page. My recommendation is to you that you implement this range slider whenever possible in your forms to make them much more interesting and much more engaging. And if you want to have another way that you can use to make your forms much more interesting and much more engaging, then check out this video right here that I recorded a few weeks ago on how you can create really cool multi-step forms in Webflow. Okay, thank you for tuning in. My name is Mike and I wish you a great day. Bye.